as we always do, you're very welcome to the executive breakfast meeting. Today, we are discussing marketing smartly in the 21st century. If you have any kind of business, if you're running something on your own, even if you're working with a big organization, there are some tips, there are some tricks, there are some tools that you can employ in your marketing approach. There are certain things that you can do to be able to manage your existing customers, develop a plan to have them recommend you to other people that you don't know yet and then work you can use your social media platforms in a very smart way to be able to double your sales triple your sales in whatever way you desire to and we have a queer sefako with us a queer thank you very much for accepting to join us a queer i've known you for quite a number of years now we met in KNUST together and i followed nelvex business dialogues for quite some time since you started and then recently mm. you introduced the ceo's dinner i can't mm -hmm. wait to be part of the next ceo's dinner in when it is when is it happening the ceo's october. dinner october october 30th i can't wait to be part of it and if you are anywhere in accra even if you are not in accra you can travel to accra for that session i hope we get invitation all the members of the executive breakfast meeting get invitation to join the ceo's dinner everybody <laughs> Thank you. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to write in the comments where you are joining from. And I've seen one of my mentors, one of my coaches, one of my support system, Dr. Evans Dia, just write that he just joined. Thank you very much. Dr. Evans Dia has been at the backbone of PIP HR and everything that we do. He's always there when we call on him. And he's always live with us. So just drop in the comments. I am coming to you once again from Kent Cup inside the Kumasi City Mall in Kumasi. I always tell you that if you need a place to have the greatest coffee, the greatest breakfast ever, if you are in Accra, go to the West Hills Mall. We just opened in West Hills Mall. And then we are here in Kumasi City Mall. Just come in. In Kumasi City Mall, we are close to the game shop. We are close to Saks Farmers and we are obviously the i store or on the South Furniture. That's where you would find us. So just type in the comments where you are joining us from. I am in Kumasi. Equia is in Accra. Let's hear where you are joining us from, and it's going to be amazing. And then also do this for us. Just share this on your Facebook wall. Share this on your WhatsApp status. Let's invite so many people to join the discussion today. I'm excited. Are you are excited. And so just zoom in and take it up from me. All right. So today we are going to enjoy, like I said earlier, an action-packed session. Um, because we've already been late, let me quickly share with you what we'll be discussing today. We're going to be talking about evolving trends, how we could take advantage of those trends in our marketing to scale up our sales. We're going to be talking about how we could build and manage communities to our own advantage. <clears throat> and then we would quickly dive into how we could completely manage our customers and then we'll take a look at places to find the right customers and then how we could do smart advertisements. Um, I needed to do um, a slide presentation. I prepared a slide, but because we had issues with internet this morning, I couldn't show you the slides. So pardon me on that. The next time you have me on this, I'm going to show you slides so that you could put down certain things. All right, Ekia, just a minute. And that's what I want to say. Even though she will not be able to project her slides, I want you to take a pen, take a paper, take your phone notes, but if you are not using your phone to watch this right now, get something and write down this information we are going to have today because you are going to need it right after the training. You need to implement it. We know that the goal of the executive breakfast meeting is to help you with these uh, tips to be able to choose in your own business, in your personal life, in your family, in your pursuits, in your career. So write them now. You need these points. Thank you. Take it up. Thank you, too. So um, let me quickly, briefly introduce myself. That part of my introduction is closely related to why we are discussing smart ways to advertise in the 21st century. You see? The 21st century is made up of technology. As soon as you mention 21st century, the first thing that comes to mind is technology. And today's technology, characterized by phones, computers, social media, 
things like that is what you should use for your marketing. And it also means that those are the new trends. And so if you are not ready to use those trends, then I'm sorry, you are, you, are, you are kind of missing out. Because today, everybody is online. And the only place or the smartest place to get people to buy from you constantly is to work online. Even if you have a physical shop, it is so really important to have an online shop or an online presence. Now, Back to my introduction, I'm Ikua Sefako. I work for three hospitals combined as their marketing managers. And on the side, through my marketing activities, I noticed that a lot of startups had issues when it comes to scaling up and expanding in terms of marketing and sales. And so I created a WhatsApp group back in 2018 and then i started coaching and mentoring them on how they could expand how they could start their businesses and today three years down the line that little whatsapp platform that i created has my has grown into a m nine platforms and also a facebook group and others and it has gotten me awards it has opened me up to the world. It has given me a lot of leverage and I've been able to impact people all around the world. Why am I saying this or why am I introducing myself to you in this respect? It's simply to tell you that the online space can give you things that it will take you a longer time to achieve only when you are operating in the physical aspect. Operating on the online platforms helps you go global in a very short period. And it also helps you to be able to get people who are your prospects very, very easily. You could make 10,000 customers online <laughs> in a little while, but it will take almost like 10 years to get those number of customers with just a physical shop. And so you would notice that even big customers or even big companies are moving online. Now, it's beautiful to be online. Personally, the least I make online in a month is 1,000. And I always say it's wherever I go that I'm able to make more than 4,000, as high as that. If I don't make anything at all, that is 1,000. So... It is important that you as a business person take advantage of the online space. That is the new trend. That is where everybody is hand heading towards. And it's very, very important to take advantage of that space. Now, the next thing is being online is not just enough. There is they, they, they are like twins and they work hand in hand. So you being online also needs you to grow your own correct audience of community on the right platform. Now, the key words are these, your own, which means that these people you are going to bring together should be brought together under your own umbrella. Two, there should be correct audience. Correct audience in the same sense that they should be your ideal customer. You shouldn't just bring any kind of person under your umbrella because you're not just bringing them. You're not just forming that community for fun. You are forming the community so that everybody who enters in that community is like your customer. It's your prospect. You are, you are there to work on the person. The only difference is at the time you are bringing the person in, the person is a cold customer. So as the person comes under your umbrella, you are going to warm the person into a hot customer. And as soon as the person becomes a hot customer, the person will give you sales anytime, any day. And I always love it when my phone beeps because that means that someone just made some payments. 
and it could be at night it could be in the day it could be any time that is the beauty of online you don't need to be present physically between some time and some time for you to make sales and so the next thing or the next keyword i would want you to pay attention to is right platform so when you are building this community of your ideal customers they should be it should be built on the right platform now what do i mean by right platform right platform in the sense that when you are looking at your customer persona or you are drawing your customer avatar you need to know who your customer is the age brackets of your customer the income level of your customer where your customers are located now when it comes to online depending on the kind of product you sell you come up with some class of people now not every class of person is found on every class or every type of platform online there are certain platforms that you wouldn't find certain people so you should know who your customers are and that would tell you where you are going to find them and that is exactly where you should place your online community the next thing to consider when you are choosing your online community is to make sure that your online community goes in line with the type of service or the type of product you are selling now let's say for example you do videos all right you can do videos effectively on WhatsApp, but you can do videos effectively on YouTube and Instagram. So you need to know where your product type suits better. So two things, who your customers are and where they are located, plus where they would find it more interesting to be able to engage you based on how you present your goods or your services i hope that is loud and clear thank you now let's move on to the next slide and in this slide we are going to be discussing how you could manage and grow your online community it is really really important to me because if you are able to do this job well your sales journey is about 90 percent you don't need to come up with a product and then you now start thinking where to go and advertise or where to go and make sales you see before people buy from you there are three things that automatically happens in the customer journey or in the sales journey k l c no like trust it is systematic it happens to everybody. But when you have your online community, you already do the job of know, like, and trust. And so as soon as you bring your product out, people jump on it and you make sales without necessarily advertising it. Now, what do I mean by KLT? You see, let's say that you walk into a shop and then on a shelf, you find two types of toothpaste. You find pepsodent, and then you find a kua toothpaste. Which of these toothpaste would you likely choose? I'm sure you are going to choose pepsodent, right? Because you know the brand pepsodent. You've heard of it several times. And you, you, you like the brand. Even if you are not a great fan, at least pepsodent compared to a cool toothpaste, I'm a Ghanaian, yeah. <laughs> Personal compared to a cool toothpaste, mm -hmm. you, you like Pepsodent more because you know that one and you trust that at least you are not going to waste your money buying that one. You get it? So KLT has been achieved. It happens in every type of sales and marketing. Whenever you are selling, people need to know you or people need to know the product you are selling and after they have known that product they need to like it then after that they develop some kind of trust and it is that trust that pushes them to give you their money or buy so you 
I hear a lot of people online say, I've been, I've been advertising, I've paid Facebook so many times to do advert, and it's not working, and it's not that. It's simple. You are not doing it right, because those people you are calling on to buy from you do not know you. That is why Kojo Entry would organize a concert and charge 200 students, 500 students, and people are willing to pay and attend. And an upcoming artist would organize a concert and pay or charge 20 students, and people wouldn't attend. It's as simple as that. People do not know that upcoming artist. They do not like him, and they do not trust him. So even though he's charging very little, a lot of people would still love to choose Kojuentri's concert over his. It's just a psychological thing. The mind is that funny. So it is your responsibility to start the foundations right. And as you build on that foundation, you are going to make your sales journey very, very easy. Now, back to how you can grow and manage your community. You have to give value. People are online to have fun. And there, are so there is so much noise online. So much. But people are able to differentiate between good noise and bad noise. And so if you are able to stand out to give value for people's time, they would love to be associated with you, like you, and trust you. You'll be known for value. And that is why people would give you their money. So if it's a product you are selling, you should make sure that your content is correct. So that if I buy it, I would be willing to come back the next time and even recommend you to the next person. The next thing you need to do is to be consistent. I always tell people that online shops are the same as physical shops. So just as you wake up every morning and then if you have a physical shop, you would want to open it at a particular time and close at a particular time every day. It is the same way you need to manage your online community. You need to show up. So you can't show up today and decide to keep quiet for months and show up later. You can't do that. If you do that, it creates some doubt in the minds of people. And then it's, it tarnishes or it shakes the trust they have for you. And you don't achieve your purpose. Because even in a physical shop, if I come to your shop today to buy, and tomorrow I come and you're not there, the next day I come, you're not there, that the first time I'll be thinking, probably even if I walk all the way to a quest shop, she might not be there. She's unpredictable. She's not consistent. So let me rather go to someone I know that opens his or her shop every day. So just as it works on outside, it works online as well. You need to be consistent. And it's not just about showing up, but always showing up correctly, showing up with value, be known for something online. The next one, you need to be efficient and proactive. When you are online, you need to be efficient and proactive. We spoke about trends, right? Every time online, trends do pop up, okay? And you being able to take advantage of these trends to market your products and services shows how proactive you are. And it helps you to be able to bring in new people into your community. So it is very important to be efficient as well as proactive. The next one is for you to have good customer relationship and group management. Good customer relationship and group management. Like I told you, you didn't just bring any type of person under your umbrella. You brought your prospects. And so they watch you every blessed day. Every day they watch you. And so you need to have self-control. You need to make sure that you are doing or you are giving to them what you promised to them. You can't tell people that, see, come, I want to be your business coach. And there you are always coming up with funny content. That was not what you promised them. That was not why you invited them. 
And so you have to get good customer service. These are people coming from different backgrounds and they don't even know your face and you don't know anybody behind their phone numbers or the names you see. And so you need to make sure that you do things right and manage your group well. Your rules should be rules. Have, have good rules to manage the group and make sure that <coughs> you don't bend those rules. If you have a Facebook group or you have a WhatsApp group or you have a YouTube community or a podcast or anything or an Instagram profile, never ever see it as, oh, this is just a Facebook group. Oh, this is just a WhatsApp group. Oh, this is just a YouTube community. Oh, no, that is your office. That is the space you bought online and you have to make good use of it. Just as you take your normal shop, if you were to rent a normal shop, you would take it seriously and not allow anybody to misbehave in there. The same applies to these communities as well. So in my community, for example, you dare not do certain things. I'll throw you out. And because I have been consistent with that, people have come to understand. And so there are things that they wouldn't even ask of me because they know I wouldn't take it. People refer to it as acquire office, and I'm proud because only a few people's office gives them 1,000 in a month or as high as 4,000 and over in a month. But that's what Sabgu gives me that. And so, yeah, only a few people's offices gives them international and local awards and recognitions and influence. But that online community gives me that. And so it is not just a WhatsApp group. It is not just a Facebook group. It is a business. That is what it is. So you can create yours and decide to manage it as just that you add the name. But I'm sorry. The benefits that it gives to other people, you wouldn't get it. All right, let's move on quickly to how to completely manage your customers. Now, when it comes to customer management, um, there are a lot of things I could have spoken about, but I've decided to choose three categories. And in these three categories, there are places that a lot of people do not look at, but they are very effective and easy to work with and when you are able to manage your customers in these three fields effectively sales is easy it comes like this now the first one is often customers often customers and i say give them back the appearance often customers give them back the appearance now who are often customers if we let's bring it back to normal life. If we say someone is an orphan, what does it mean? It simply means that the person has no father or mother, right? The same with this. There are a lot of you who are struggling with sales just because you have made your customers orphans. You have decided not to give them mother or father, which is you. And the, 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 Main reason that people get often customers, it's simply because they have or they lack good record keeping, poor records. They don't keep records of their clients. And when I'm coaching people, I ask them and they tell me, oh, I take care. every customer of mine is saved on my phone. And I'm like, okay, so what happens if you lost your phone? And then they tell me, oh, Auntie Akwa, you see, I know them off head. And I'm like, okay. So can you go back 10 years ago or when you started this business to give me every single customer you have worked with? And then every time, I never fail. <laughs> every time I go on this journey with them, you realize that they, they sit down quietly and then there is always a list. Oh yeah, 
there was this man, there was this woman who really used to buy from me, but I get it every day. And I'm sure that if I go through the same with you, I would get it as well. Now, often customers are simply those customers you used to work with for some time, and then maybe something happened and you lost touch. And then you are not able to complete your journey with them. You see, these people are great opportunities for you. You know why? They already like you. They already know you. They already trust you. That is why they used to buy from you. So you losing touch with them, it's like you just decided to give your gold away. All you need to do is get back to them and say, hi, I've missed you. How has life been? I really, really, really miss you. See, I'm sorry I lost touch. It's, it's, it's just due to A, B, C, or D. But I really have been thinking about you. See, my business has really grown. We, do, we, now add, we now do this, we now do that, we now do that, we now do that. At first, we only used to do this, and that was what you were buying from us. But now we do this and this and this and this and that in addition. And I would love to get you free samples so that you could have a taste of them. You are back in touch with your orphan customers. I just pray that... I just pray that this little knowledge I'm sharing with you, the wise people in here have taken advantage of it. Uncle Mark, is my time oh. up? <laughs> Almost. So when you see Almost. me like that, oh. you have five minutes. Because we have to move into the questions and answers session. It is very important we move there because people have specific questions. And that is what is going to help us delve deep into their situations, okay? This is also supposed to be a coaching session. So once the questions come, we get into it. So we're going to wrap up with the presentation in the next five minutes, and then we'll get into the questions and answers. And I'm sure some of the questions will move you into the other aspects you've not yet spoken about. So go on. Okay, so since I have five minutes, let me just quickly finish with the um, three areas I was mentioning. Now, the from the I, orphan customers, the next... I, I am back. I am back because um, my mentor says that, Dr. Evans, Dia says that, can she have five or eight minutes more? So I'm giving you 10 minutes. I'm giving you 10 minutes. In fact, I am personally enjoying today's session. I'm, I've been, you see, I've been using my phone. I've been typing a lot of points today. So you have 10 minutes, not five. You have 10 minutes, so... Okay, so the next category of customers that a lot of us should pay attention to are friends and family. And I say that it's not your usual. Mostly when you talk about friends and family, people are thinking that we are talking about sister, brother, auntie, those type of family. And then they, they start coming up with excuses like, oh, those people, they like to buy from you, but they won't pay. See, First things first, when we talk about friends and family, we are not only talking about blood. I'm talking about anybody in your church. I'm talking about anybody in your association and club. I'm talking about your old school friends or old classmates. I'm talking about anybody in your community, your neighbors. How many of these people know what you do? But these people already know you, they like you and trust you. How many people in your church that when I come into contact with them and I ask them, oh, do you know Ekua? Do you know Mark? Do you know this person? What do they do? How many people will be able to say it? I'm sure that about 80% of your church members don't know what you do. And about 80% of your neighbors don't know what you do. They only, go, they only see you go and come. You have a lot of associations. You join a lot of Facebook groups and face, um, WhatsApp groups and things. Junk of them on your phone. None of these people know what you do. You just join, sit there, watch people, and you're done. Please, I beg, carry your business for your head. Because until you shout your name, until you shout what you do, you never know who needs it. 
So make good use of your friends and family. Now, let me share a quick trick for you. For your biological blood family, those people who like to buy things from you just because you are their sister, you are their daughter, you are whatever, and they wouldn't want to pay. There is a smart way to get them to pay you. The smart way to get them to pay you is for them to give you referrals. Or it is for them to make sure that they, 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 they give you um, uh, reviews. So let them tell people, let them, let them do a video and tell the world how they have used the product and it has helped them. Let them write how they have used the product and it has helped them. Me, if you're my friend and, or my family and you're coming to me for free coaching, I sign it with you. See, you are to sign here. You are coming for free, but after the free, you have to tell the world how it went because that is going to convince someone else to pay me. So you don't lose. The next group of people that a lot of you do not see or do not take good care of are your old customers, your old and existing customers. And I say that you do basket kind of marketing. Now, what do I mean by basket kind of marketing? Someone in Amunim can tell you, basket can tell When you pour water into a basket, it doesn't hold, right? It just off. And then you come and pour new water off. That is the kind of marketing you do. You are always busily looking for new customers, paying for advertisements here, paying for advertisements there, shouting, come and buy, and all that. And now the new trend is disturb me with your sales, disturb me with your um, um, what? Disturb me with your orders. It doesn't work that way. Nobody comes online to disturb anybody with orders. It just tells people how cheap you are when you are marketing. That is what you do. You are busily bringing in new people, looking for new people, filling in, and then you never take care of them. As soon as they buy one or two things from you, now we jump home. Now we stand construction for Friday and begun. Basket kind of marketing. Stop it. Back to the KLT rule, your old and existing customers, they already know you, they already like you, and they already trust you. And so they are the first group of people you should always show your new products and services to. If somebody was able to trust you to pay you for something, it means that there is about 80 to 90% that that same person will pay you for another product. So market to them first before you go and look for new people to bring. Don't do basket kind of marketing. Uncle Mark, I think that um, I would have to end here because if I need to continue my new slide, that would take me more than the time you gave me. What, what point is left? What point is left to discuss right now? Okay, so we are left to see where you can find your prospects online. Exactly. That is very important to me. And if you are having value from today's discussion, just type in the comment section, value. Let's see that. Value, value. Which means that we are giving her some time to discuss that because it is important to know where you can find your ideal customers. It is very important. This is an important part. And I wouldn't want to take that away from us today. So if you are having value, just type. Just type in the comment, value. Rebecca DeLong says value. God bless you, soft mommy. Charles Light. Adam, I think we have pastors and ministers here today. So much value, Asantua. Charles says value. That's great. So it means that we have some time. So let me let me move away again and then take that, that aspect. It's very important. Give that to us. Okay. So back to our discussion. I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity to say this. I'm very passionate about it. There are so many places to find your prospects online. So many places to find your prospects online. But I'm going to share three places. And this thing doesn't work only online. It also works offline. So just take and stay. Just three. I'm going to share those three places where you should look at for your prospects. The first one is using gatekeepers. Gatekeepers. Keepers. Now, what do I mean by gatekeepers? 
before you let's say you want to enter into somebody's house and there is a gate man you need to talk to the gate man before you enter into the house right so that gate man is the gatekeeper now when it comes to businesses every business has a gatekeeper there is definitely somebody who has access to a huge number of people who are your ideal customers. Let me use this example. Let's say, for example, that you sell um, kitchen appliances and there is this other person who runs a YouTube channel about cooking. So that person who runs the YouTube channel about cooking, who has, I'm sorry about the dog, I think um, I have a visitor. My husband probably is taking care of that. So I'm sorry about the noise. That's fine. It's okay. Let's go okay. ahead. All right. So that's woman running the YouTube channel, the cooking YouTube channel, where she has so many followers. It's your gatekeeper. Because anybody who is watching her channel is definitely interested in cooking and that person would need a cooking appliance so if you are able to use that woman to get you to her followers you've gotten a gatekeeper anytime that woman uses any of your kitchen appliances that you are selling to create a video for her people all those people are likely to purchase that cooking appliance. So that is an example of what I call a gatekeeper. And every kind of business has a gatekeeper. It is your responsibility to sit down and ask yourself, who are my gatekeepers? Now, when I was in tech, there was this man, legacy and legacy. He understood what gatekeeper meant. He had a partnership with tertiary institutions. He, he, he used to do um, coaching and motivational things on campus. He had access to universities and he would come on campus and get access to final year students. And then he would talk to them just like a session we are having right now. That was how I became a fan. That was how a lot of students became his members. He make good use of gatekeepers make good use of your gatekeeper know them and make good use of them the next one are online groups now we have open and closed groups open groups are groups that allow you to just post your adverts and closed groups are groups that will not allow you to post your adverts but maybe you might pay to advertise or they'll not even allow an advert at all see you have no problem no matter what these groups, whether open or closed, there are smart ways. There are smart ways to find your prospects there. One thing is online. People do not come online to buy. You see, buying them, everybody buys. But as soon as you tell somebody, come and buy, their brain quickly falls the barrier. It's funny, but that is sense. So you don't need to open up to people that come and buy. But there are so many beautiful ways to ask people to buy. And the best way is through content marketing. You see what I'm doing to you right now? If, I, if by the close of this session, I tell you that, see, come and pay for private coaching. Or I have a course that is going to delve more deeper into this. So come and pay so that I give it to you. I'm sure a lot of you will be saying, Auntie Okuya, please take my money. I, I want to come. That is what you are supposed to be doing online. Your customers have pain points. They have places that they need bounds. They have places that they need to cure. They have pain points. Know their pain points and educate them. Give them the solution to their pain points and they'll be willing to pay you for more. So you don't just join groups online. The first thing is join the right groups. 
join groups that has access to your prospects. Don't, don't go and be join groups that you just go there, waste credit, laugh, unnecessary comments, and come back. No. Join groups that has access to your prospects. Now, after you have joined those groups, give value, content, sell pain points, solve people's solutions. It could be in the comment section. It could be a post you, 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 you frequently give out. And the sad part is people rather would want to share the link of their page to other people's groups. They won't accept. They won't approve it. But if you are able to share that value, people will come into your inbox and say, see, you said this thing. I think I really need it. Can you help me with more? And you're like, yes, I can. But it will cost you this. I prepare Alata Samina, black soap. And with this strategy, I'm telling you, I sell to foreigners. And some even pay me to teach them. I just, whenever I'm preparing my soap, I just take videos, short videos of the soap I'm preparing, and I upload it on soap making platforms. And I add a little education about it. And these white people love black soap so much, but I can't prepare it. And so they, they, they come quickly to my inbox, and then they're like, please, can you teach me how to prepare it? And I'm like, I can, but it comes at a cost. And there are some that will say, oh, I, even if you teach me, I can't prepare it here because I wouldn't have access to cocoa pod and things like that. But can you package and send to me? And I'm like, of course. So my black soap goes all over the world. But I have never been to any of those countries. These are smart ways to sell in groups and find your ideal prospects. The next one is on open, um, sorry, question and answer forums like Quora or Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. These platforms are platforms on which people go to ask questions every day. And so when, when you type um, any question online, the platform pops up. Oh, what a beautiful way to find prospects. Just make sure that things related to your field, you put answers, you, you, you give answers to those fields. So it means that anytime someone asks a question, your answer is going to pop up and people would read it. And people will say, wow, who is the brain behind this answer? Let me contact the person. So these three ways are easy ways to find prospects. Do I have more time? Um, we are wrapping up, so. Okay. So um, the next thing we would have discussed is how to do smart advertisements. Okay. But so let's, we'll, yes, we'll bring that in the questions. Um, we are, we'll bring that in the questions. It's 10 40 now. So seriously, I, I am having so much value in today's training session. These sessions have been amazing from the ninth of last month since we started this and it's been awesome it's been amazing and to, today is another day we are having so much value as Antoine says so much value so much value um Charles, okay so much value we are having today thank you so much for sharing with us today you see the reason why i asked you guys to be writing down the point and be taking down the point is because as she was speaking a lot of value was being churned out. And these are some of my take-homes. Be consistent, show up for something with value. Be efficient and pro productive, proactive. Have good customer management. And then one thing that really moved me was the fact that most of us are doing basket kind of marketing. And it's an amazing <laughs> take-home for me today. Most of us, in fact, I can say that about 80% of us are having basket kind of marketing. And the three things that we have to do, three areas that we can identify our customers, gatekeepers, online groups, and then open questions and answer forums. I am particularly in love with the Quora. And then there's another one, answer the public. Answer the public. You can try that one also. Answer the public.com. That is also from where you can have, you can engage in a lot of sharing of value to be seen 
those two places are very key. There's a question, and this question is asked by Doris Tovo. I hope I mentioned the name right. She's in Tilapia Business, please. She wants to know who are the gatekeepers for Tilapia Business? <laughs> Sorry. That's a session now. So type in your questions and let's go. I see Asantua asking for your social media handles. I'm going to share it very soon. So type in your questions. We are in the quest question session. And you can also ask the tips and the things that you are picking up from here. Let's go. Okay. So you are back. All right. So <laughs> Darius is actually from a community. And <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay. So Tilapia is food. And so um, anybody online who is into food, okay, anybody who, who manages a food community, be it a recipe community, a cooking platform, or anybody who talks about food that has a large following is um, a correct gatekeeper. The way um, diet management platforms as well. And people also preach um, healthy eating. So you just have to get access to these people and share with them what you have, which is your tilapia. And then you, you, can, you can even come up with your own um, healthy living way of consuming tilapia. And that's those recipes you share with the person is going to help the person understand how he or she can convince his followers that getting tilapia is a, a very good way to maintain your diet or it's a, it's a good thing to use for your for food preparation and there should be something unique about your tilapia it could be that you have already seasoned it it could be that yours is from the the um, original local pond and these things added would help the person to tell his or her followers and definitely you are going to make sales out of that it's 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 not just fair enough to just pay influencers to just say or put your flyer on their platforms no because anybody's flyer could be placed on a platform but it is important to get those people to talk about it and tell them why yours is special. And that is what will make people not go and buy the tilapia from outside, but will want to order from you. Great, great. This, this is great information. So just drop your questions in the session, in the, in your, in the comment session. So I have a question for you, Akia. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking you way back into building communities. So there are people who are like, oh, me, I don't like the social media and all of that. And social media is some way and all of that. One, why is it so important for us to build communities? Either, you see, sometimes you don't have to build communities in all the platforms. And so why is it important to build a social media community? Whether WhatsApp, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and all the other platforms. And what are the three main things that you see is how we can go about building the community okay i hope you got my question so why is it so important for us to build a community on social media to be able to advertise why is it important why should somebody get into it and then how do we go about building a community okay so you go into business not for yourself but for people and wherever people are wherever people are, there is money. And growing your own community puts you as an authority. You see, people love their leaders and they look up to them. In my community, it's not like I, I know more than everybody. There are, there are lecturers, there are um, big people in my community. So it, it isn't like I am, I am the best, but just because I am, I, I possess that leadership role, they look up to me and whatever I say, they accept. So you building your community simply means that 
you are bringing people together. And you're bringing people together wherever people are gathered. Money is. You can't sell without people because you need people to buy. So building of a community is important because you bring people together for yourself. And then you go ahead to take up a leadership position and people listen to their leaders. So you, 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 you become that authoritative figure. You possess authority and influence. And that makes your sales more easy. Because whatever it is that you sell, people then come to understand that, oh, if it is a queer that is selling this thing, then it is of value. And they will pay for it. See, on a normal day, you could organize a class, an online class, and charge 20 cities. And you wouldn't get people to patronize it. But I have online classes that cost as high as 200 cities. And I get people to buy it because I just show it to my people and I tell them that this one is my new gold. And since it is coming from a kua, they would buy it. But they don't just buy. It is because they know that a kua gives value. You wouldn't pay a kua money, attend her class and gain nothing you now you will see value you understand so these these are principles so if you want to grow your online community if you want more people to be attracted to your online community the fundamental solution is for you not to compromise on what you promised them what you told them you'll be giving to them and you need to be consistent with it i have been doing this for three years and it has been amazing it has been amazing indeed because I've been following you for three years and the journey has been amazing. I realize you recently posted about your snail farming and you made a hatch and you had about how many? 300? 300 plus. Plus snails. And it's amazing. You know, the snail market is very ripe in Ghana. Uh, yeah. Snails are very expensive to get. So anybody that is in snail farming and snail business is really in for something big. And I like that. Yes, I... I you see, one of the things I have picked up today and it's going to stay with me is this. Be known for something. Okay, so pick your niche very well. Offer value in those platforms you find yourself. And you said it so beautifully. Sometimes we join some platforms, we join some groups, and it doesn't have any direct benefits to what we do. And so we just go there, we find the memes, we find the funny things, we find the jokes, we laugh over them. And at the end of the day, we just tune out and we've wasted data. And today we are learning that in picking the platform, it is important to look at the niche. It is important to look at the areas that we are, we are, we are, we are concerned with, we are interested in, that is in line with our businesses. And also offer value. It's not just being there to consume, consume, consume. The only way people can really, and I'm trying to put all these things together so that we wrap up very quickly. The only way people can really identify us as an authority, as people who really know what we are about in the field we are in, is when we offer value. And there's something you said, okay, you said that. You don't have to know it all because there are people in your organization or in your community, for instance, who may know more than you do. But every time you give something you make sure that it is value you are offering to them and that is great um someone has a question i think i want to enter into snail farming can i have a bit of education please um so you'll give us a brief one and then later i'll let pastor jackson contact you for uh, further detail into snail farming so he wants to enter into snail farming can he have just a bit okay so just okay so um pastor ivan jackson you are fortunate because I think next week, 23rd or so, I'm having my last snail and mushroom farm class for 2021. If you miss this one, then it's going to be 2022. Now, let me just tell you why snail farming is amazing. That's the only information time can permit me to give you now. Then you can pay for the class and attend. Snail farming is beautiful. 
see snails we don't have male we don't have female they are hermaphrodites so every one snail is a potential baby giver and snails do not lay less than less than 300 eggs they lay in bits okay one snail can lay as high as 600 eggs just one and so snails they, if you start a snail farm today with just one or two snails in in few months you are having so many snails and feeding them is very affordable the vegetable sellers around are my best friends. They just take off the um, rotten lettuce and cabbage leaves, and that is my snail feed. The fruit seller peels the mango and papa, and that is my snail feed. You don't need much to feed them. And getting a housing for them is very simple as well. See, snail farming is the easiest yet lucrative type of farm you could do and like max said it is a it is a fresh market in ghana it is a fresh market you you wouldn't go into a mall and see a canned snail or a roasted snail that has been packaged neatly so that you can just readily go pick it up and come prepare whatever food you want to prepare with it. But there are so many people outside. There are so many Ghanaians, Nigerians, Africans outside who are yearning to keep consuming the snails they used to consume when they were here back home. So it means that export-wise too, it's a great opportunity. And the slime of the snail is a very beautiful cosmetic product that is really expensive so you being able to position yourself to get a link to be giving out the slime alone a so that is all i can say for now due to right. time so that is all i can say for now so pastor jackson i have just shared and as Antoine also asked if we can have your social media so i've just shared the link to nelvig's business dialogues in the comment section so you can click and then follow nelvig's business when you follow her, you will get to know a QS personal uh, page as well. That one is also on Nelvix Business Dialogues page. So when you get there, you just go and follow her. And then I'll share her contact. I hope I can share it. That's what we do here. Yes, I'll share you your can. contact community so that people can reach you. But there's another question from Charles Light Adama, Pastor Charles. How does one handle effectively multiple niches if your businesses are in multiple niches as far as marketing is concerned and i think you are the best person to answer this because you are in multiple niches at the same time so how do you manage it how do you handle it effectively okay so um handling multiple niches is possible very possible you first have to start from one and be known for that one well if you are able to do that transitioning into other ones becomes easy because when it comes to the social media um, um field or even the physical field let me use despite as an example you see brand brand is what people think about you it's funny when a lot of people think that branding is just about colors and logos no branding is what people think about you that is what people say when you are not around so that tells you that this is what really people know me for now when people come to get a correct perception about your business or you it has an effect on your next business let me use despite as an example do you remember what happened when despite went into savings and loan at that time, a lot of savings and loan companies were collapsing. But Ghanaians jumped onto best points. And then they had this common thing they used to say, oh, despite bank idea, a Why did they have that mindset? Because they had the perception that this person's brand is correct. So that goodwill was translated to 
other things he does. Into obi impe, obi impe ni tea, obi impe that tea. I've forgotten the name, but or better, everybody is using YouTube now. Even though we have other kinds of idol test salts on the market, but or better. So what I'm trying to say is start from one, concentrate on one. You can't do all of them at the same time. You will confuse your followers. Start from one. Grow authority in one. It will definitely translate to the others. I am known as a business coach that helps people start businesses. But today, I sell black soap, people will buy. I sell snails, people will buy. I'm doing awards, people would go for it. Because that goodwill will definitely translate to the other ones. So make sure that you do your job well with one. Then you can multiply to others. Awesome. That goodwill will bring you to the point where people will trust whatever you bring in. And that is how you are going to be able to easily manage your multiple niches. This is great. It looks like we have no more questions. But one of the things I want us to take home today, and I will hammer it and hammer it again and again, let's stop the basket kind of marketing. Let's go and look for the orphaned customers and give them back their parents. Look for your orphaned customers. Give them back their parents. Get in touch. Get in touch. Get in touch. One of the things I learned from my mentor, Dr. Evans Dia, um, a couple of years ago, and it's always with me, has to do with every time we are doing things, we have to have relational thinking in mind. You should work with people. You should relate to people, not for today's gain only. It is important to think posterity. And sometimes you should think long-term relationship. And that is the same way that is going to help you in your marketing and in your dealings with your customers. It's not just the one sale the person is bringing you. Some customers are even gatekeepers themselves. But you wouldn't know unless you treat them right. And um, AC Beko said, I joined late, but I still got a lot of value. Thank you very much. Um, Charles says, thank you very much for the answer. Um, we have Eric who says that lesson let's start from one group authority in one and do your jobs well. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. We are having a lot of value today, a lot of it shared today. Thank you very much. And so let's do well. So there's a question from Asanto. Asanto is one of the trainers. She's also one of the mentors of the training of this particular session. She came on last two weeks and her session was great. I think, no, last two weeks, yes. Her session was great. So for those who have not yet watched it, just as I promised with Ekia Sefako's own, we have edited as Antoine's presentation with the points and it's on the, on the YouTube page. So look for Build with Mark. I've shared the link in the comment section, Build with Mark in the YouTube or the YouTube page. And then you can go and watch it if you missed it. As Antoine spoke about building a formidable career and she delved deep by using her own personal experience in her business, in her career as an example. So as Antoine is asking, can we bring a Kiasefa call back? <laughs> because the kind of value we've had today, and I know that there's more in you we've not yet been able to explore. And so those of us who want us to bring her back, can you type back, back, back in the comments, right? Now I want to see how many back, 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 back I get in the comment section. Let's type that right now. Let me see. So that that may also convince her to decide that, yes, I'm going to come back to executive advice. <laughs> I'm waiting for your comments now. I'm waiting for so yes. So AC says back. AC says we should bring you back. As Antoine says back. Yes, who is joining? Then we have two now. I'm counting. Oh, ah, Mami Abna Bando says back. Okay. So Nana Kusia says back. Oh, this is beautiful. We want Asantua back to. Okay, so someone is Asantua, someone is asking that you come back to because oh Eric says back, 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 back. Breakerly Erasy says back. So it means that your answer should come. Oh, Nati Bongo, Nati Bongo, one of the best photography and videographers I have ever known. Nati Bongo uh, is also come back. Yes. So, so Nati, I want to partner him for the CEO's dinner. Nati, so you have a contract now. 
It's a partnership <laughs> with Delmix CEO's dinner. So Nati, please, I'll give you her contact and then you will let that child says back. Everybody is saying back. So it means that you are going to come back. We are going to let us know when she will be able to come back. But just as I promised, we are going to edit this particular session with the points and the tips that we are having today, the value we are having today. Put it all together and drop it on the YouTube channel. If you have not yet followed this particular page, please follow it now. And if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, just get on YouTube. It is Build with Mag. The name is simple. Build with Mac. Like this in the comments. And then you are going to subscribe to it. When you subscribe, just hit the notification bell that you see by the subscribe button. So that anytime we post a new video, you are going to be able to be notified to join. It's been great. And before we sign off today, please, your last, this will wrap up in the next one minute and then let's sign off. Okay, so wrapping up, all I would want to say is thank you so much for the love. Like, it's amazing when you talking to someone, um, you, 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 you go somewhere to share and you get people to listen. Without you guys, it would have been boring. Like, I didn't get the energy to explode the way I did. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. But there is one thing that is always limiting people from doing more when it comes to business, when it comes to personal life, when it comes to family life, spiritual life, anything, every aspect of your life. Before you can do more, you need clarity. You need clarity. What are you doing? Be intentional about what you are doing. You don't just go online for nothing. I keep telling people, this day and age, data is expensive. So if you just go online for nothing, and you buy expensive smartphones for nothing, those are investments. You end up poor. So make good use of the investments and make sure that you have clarity. Know what you are doing. Because if you have clarity, it speaks everybody who comes into contact with you sees that this person understands what he or she is doing it gives you confidence and that confidence translates to your customers and that is what pushes them to give you money that is what brings their trust so be clear if you're having issues with clarity you can contact me i'll help you to be clear it's going to grow your business thank you All right. Clarity, 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 clarity. Thank you very much. We've had a lot of value from you today. Just as we concluded today, we're going to bring you back. So if we appreciate that, so enriching. Thanks, Max. So thank you to Mark Asantua. Thank you. So I have just shared her number. So that is Equia Sefako's number. I'm leaving it on for the next few minutes for you to just save it and then contact her for business coaching. Again, if you have not followed or subscribed to our YouTube channel, it's built with Mac. Just go search it, subscribe. The older videos are there. I've posted the one with Dr. Kelvin. I've posted the one with Asantua. The rest will follow suit, and then you'll get to re-watch it. Thank you very much. It's been amazing. We had a lot of challenges at the beginning, but you mm -hmm. were so patient with us. You stayed with us, and here we are at the final stages. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Our next, I'm going to announce the next trainers very soon. So our next one is in September. And September is an amazing month for me. I'm going to tell you why when we meet again in on the second Saturday of September. Until then, it's been amazing having you here with us, Ekuya Sefako, the amazing 99 <laughs> Ideas business woman entrepreneur. 99 Ideas, wow. She's always bringing out ideas. Thank you, all of you. Thank you for the engagement. Thank you for your time. Thank you for staying tuned till the end. And it's amazing. And bye-bye. See you again on the second Saturday of September. We love you all. Bye.